Everyone stand, please. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. When it is past, and as a watch in the night, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. O oh, satisfy us early that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are as dust. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. I was brought low and he helped me. This is my comfort in my affliction. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, Turn unto me and have mercy upon me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. For bring thou me out of my distress. Look upon mine affliction and my pain. And forgive all my sins. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Blessing on the hearers, readers, and the doers of this most holy and righteous word. Amen? Amen. We are gathered today to celebrate. So I want to remind you we're here to celebrate. Let's take a seat at this time. We're here to celebrate the life of our dear brother, Brother Freddie Harris. And we want to celebrate it with joy. Uh, Brother Harris has gone on to be with the Lord. He is in, as we always say, a much better place, a place of rest. He is absent from this body, but he is present with the Lord. So we can celebrate today for that reason. Amen? Amen. We're going to start off today by first giving the Lord a hand praise that we are gathered here today. Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Gerald Wattis, the pastor here at Central Baptist Church. I will be your officiating minister for today, and we're going to start this service off right. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to just extend my heartfelt prayers and condolences to you, uh, Mother Harris. I know it's tough, 55 years is a long time, but know that your Central family have you covered. Amen? We love you. And family, please continue to support uh, Mother Harris, in the best way possible. Keep those phone calls coming in and stop in, scoop her up, take her out to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but don't feed her too much. We're going to continue this service. Uh, we're going to start this morning uh, with the uh, Old Testament scripture brought to us by Reverend Dr. Haley. We'll have a New Testament scripture brought to us by Minister Willie Brightman. 
We'll have the prayer by Minister Grover, and we'll have the praise team come after that. We'll have Sister uh, Maxine Andrews uh, read the acknowledgments and resolutions, and then we'll have a video uh, presentation. And as you, if you have the uh, program, we'll go with the uh, reflections of those that are listed on the program. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'll come back to you at a later point. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand praise. saints. Our Old Testament scripture reading will be a familiar Psalms, Psalms 23. Reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Again, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Minister Willie Brightman, and I will be reading the New Testament scripture. And I'm going to be reading from John, the 14th chapter, and I will read verses 1 through 4. And it reads like this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, where I, I will come again so, and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. May the word of God bless you and comfort you during this time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Ricky Grover, minister here. I stand before you to offer a word of prayer to the family. Amen. So let's go before the Lord. Let every head bow, every eyes close, and let us focus on the Lord today. Amen. Oh, gracious and most eternal Father. Dear God, we come on behalf of this family on this morning, dear God. Dear God, their hearts may be troubled, dear God. I'm sure they're feeling sorrow, dear God. But dear God, we come to celebrate our dear brother Harrison, uh, Harris, dear God. Continue to be with this family, dear God. Allow your Holy Spirit to embody them, to comfort them, to lead them, dear God, to strengthen them. When they can't go on, they got to allow them to rest in, in your strength because we know the strength of the Lord is with them, dear God. Give them that peace that surpasses all understanding on the peace of God is with them. When they can't go on, they got to allow them to seek your face. They got when we are weak, you're strong. So they got to comfort them as to go further. Even in this service today, they got allow them, they got to see you in a greater light. When darkness be, may be upon them, allow your light to shine the greatest, that you may lead them to your joy, that they may rejoice in the love that you have for them, knowing that their dear brother, their dear hu her, her husband, a father, a brother, a uncle, a friend, is no longer with them. But they got you the friend to the friendless. You're the father to the fatherless. You're the husband to those that need a husband. So that God comfort his family on this, on this day, that God, knowing that you will lead them through any darkness and you will guide them to your marvelous light. So allow them to trust and believe in you 
And we know that God in your word, you say, weeping men do it for night, but joy comes in the morning. Allow them today to experience your joy, even in this weakest hour of their time. Allow them to rejoice, knowing that you're with them and comfort them at this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone say amen, amen, amen and amen.
honor in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to each of you. Let's all remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And to the family, we offer Ruthie, good. let us remember that God can bring us through all the storms. He can be your comforter. He can make peace. And through all things, remember that we love you and that God is beside you. He will never leave you. So let him be your guide. The family wishes to express their sincere appreciation and deepest gratitude for the many cards, flowers, condolences, visits, prayers, and other acts of sympathy and concern shown during the time of sorrow. May God bless each and every one of you. Your kindness will always be remembered. The Harris family. The family would like to extend a special thanks to you, the doctors, nurses, and staff of the Flower. Kaiser Permanente, Harbor City, Vermont Healthcare, Torrance, California, and Kendrick Hospital, Gardena, California, for their love and their care. The family has chosen a couple of cards for me to read. The time it takes to heal from a great loss is different for each of us. God knows our hearts and always walks with us at the perfect pace of his comforting grace. He who dwells in the, sh in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God is whom I trust. Psalms 9, Psalms 91, verse 1. Praying you'll feel his tender love and care as your heart finds his path to healing and peace. Thinking of you with love, Mary Stratton, cousin. and sympathy. Memories of those we love live forever in our hearts. Thinking of you at this sad time, wishing you comfort in the days to come, praying for your comfort, love, Marilyn Gavin. With sympathy for your loss, May your heart find peace in the strength of your faith, in the closeness of friends, and in the love of family. Love you, John Lankin, Henry Davidson, class of 1965. And now I will be reading the resolutions. Resolution of respect for Brother Freddie Harris since it has pleased Almighty God to take our beloved brother on his reward, where he will join that great cloud of witnesses in the heavens. Whereas in the province of God he has fought, he has brought to a close the life of our dear brother, the pastor, officers, and members of Faith Community Church feel that it is begetting to express our sympathy to the family. We commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to the will of him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem entitled 
I'm free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God has laid, you see. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. If my parting has left a void, oh yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savor it much. Good friends, good times, a love once touched. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to thee. God wanted me now. He set me free. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church's archives. Humbly submitted on this day, created by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, February the 3rd, 2024. Reverend Timothy C. Chambers, Faith Community Church, Compton, California. Are there any members of your community church? Would you all stand? In the house. Amen. <laughs> Resolution. Central Baptist Church, Carson, California. A resolution for the family of Brother Freddie Harris. Whereas the mighty God in his unsearchable providence and permissive will has received the soul and the spirit of Brother Freddie Harris to himself, the pastor, officers, and members of Central Baptist Church express our abiding sympathy to the surviving family. We are praying earnestly for your continued experience of God's sufficient and surpassing grace during this loss. But we know God's compassion fails not, for morning by morning, new mercies we see. God asks us to trust him during seasons and when we have more questions than answers and to believe that he has both time and eternity to fulfill his promises to every child of God, that all things work together for the good to those who love God. So for your family and this season, we ask God to give you faith for your fears grace for your shortcomings, strength for your journey, hope for your uncertainty, and the love of God will cover and conquer you in every stormy gale of life. Therefore, be it resolved that we pray for our dear sister Ruthie and the entire Harris family through this difficult time. Know that our Heavenly Father knows and feels your pain. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We ask that you rejoice knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Cast your burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalms 55, 22. Respectfully submitted. February the 3rd, 2024, Reverend Gerald Waters, pastor. So we say to the family, we love you and continue to rely on God for he will truly guide you. Thank you. If I should stay I would only be in your way so I'll go 
But I know I'll think of you every step of the way. And I will always love you, will always love you, you, my darling, you.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, it's time for reflection. Amen. My name, I'm Pastor Thomas Dunbar of Redemption Christian Fellowship Center of Christ Jesus in Palmdale. Amen. And amen. And Freddie Harris was my big brother. Amen. The reason why I say that, we started a fraternity around 12 years ago. And in this fraternity, amen, in this fraternity here, we, our motto was, we are our brother's keeper. Amen. Amen. And front with that, I want to acknowledge my sister, Mother Ruthie Harris. Amen. You have our condolences, our prayer, our sympathy goes out with you and the family. Amen. She was Freddie Harris, ride or die, as the young folks call it. Amen. Amen. It's a time of celebration, right? Amen. We're celebrating the life, am I right? Amen. Amen. And then celebrating the life, we got to call it what it is. Amen. She was there with him throughout everything. All thick and thin, she was there. Amen. Amen. And so now, now getting back to Brother Harris. Amen. <laughs> My relationship with Brother Harris, it was one that grew. Amen. And, and, and it grew through our fraternity we formed. Amen. We became part of it and it grew. And in growing, our relationship grew. Our relationship grew that we called him Big Brother Harris. Amen. Because he was the oldest and he always tried to speak a little wisdom to somebody. You know, he, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. But what he was saying was true. It was something you could take to the bank. You know, uh, and, and when you get to looking at it, you got to think. He's been through things. He's been through things that a lot of our young brothers were still going through. You know, they haven't got there yet. But he's been there, and he's always instilled a little knowledge in him. And so we called him Big Brother Harris. <laughs> and I used to love going over to his house, sitting there talking with him in the dining room, sitting there drinking a little water, and we talk. We even go all the way to Louisiana. Yeah. Now, now, now I know somebody in here know what I'm talking about now. Because, see, we go back, because, see, he was from Louisiana, my people from Louisiana, Pastor James was people from Louisiana, amen. And, and we go all the way back to Louisiana. So on my way over there, I always count my little money, make sure I got a ticket to get back, you know. Because <laughs> we, we go down to Rayville, we go to Monroe, Sicily Island, all over the northern part of Louisiana. We, hey, we chop it up. And, and, you know, and that's one brother I'm going to miss, you know, because we used to sit there, talk about that, and talk about things of, that was important to us. It was one that you can confine in. And uh, he never shared your information with anybody. He took it in, and if he can help you, he helped you. He was that kind of guy. And, I mean, nowadays you don't find many like him. Amen. Amen. I must admit, he was a brother indeed. Yes, indeed. When we took that turn, say we are our brother's keeper, he kept, he kept that. He stuck with it. He was his brother's keeper. Amen. And to the family, if you need me, call me. I'll be there. I'll be there. We, get, we jump in that car. We're riding until the wheels fall off, getting from Palmdale to here. We, you know that, Ruthie. You know, all you got to do is say the word. We're here. Now, wife, we're here. Yes, indeed. It's family. It's not just friends. It's family. Amen. It's all the part of the family of Christ. God bless. Amen. How you guys doing? Um, you know, we're here today for home going. But it's not a sad occasion. This is um, a time of celebration. So I want to tell Ruth 
we are always here for you. Um, interesting thing, Fred was born in Monroe, Louisiana. Twelve years later, I was born in Monroe, Louisiana. So when our facilities merged, it's an interesting thing that Fred and I would shoot the breeze. And we're always talking about home. Because this, this gentleman who was just speak, speaking earlier, he was, um, Fred was huge on giving advice. He wants you to know in our, in our, our um, workplace, Fred had seniority. I had 20, 20 some, over 20 years of seniority. <laughs> and I was still a junior man by four other guys. And, you know, in today's world, not many people are staying on job for 20 years or more. So it is what it is. But Fred and I, we'd always shoot the breeze about Louisiana. And to, for those who don't know, Louisiana was for the people who didn't live there. For us, it was Louisiana. You know, this is, this is home for us. So we would, we would talk about stuff that none of the other guys in the plant knew about. And um, they would say, well, why you, why you, all you guys do is talk, talk, talk. Man, we had a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, if the, you know, we talked about weather, what was going on and what was going on in Rabel. And you know what? I don't know everybody's here by name, but Fred was always family. Always talking about my family, his family. And um, Fred always made sure that I knew I was the junior man. <laughs> and um, he was big. And Fred had more seniority than everybody else in our area. So he would come in. I would come in and Fred would say, well, Chico, I want to tell you something. And this was day in, day out, every day. Fred had a message. And um, it was about what he was not going to do that particular day at work. Okay? <laughs> now, what that meant was I was a junior man. That meant it's what I was going to do at, at work. And it wasn't no, wasn't no choices. You know, if everything's going to run right, the junior man had to do his job. There's no if and that. You know, a lot of the people here will know as in seniority, hey, the way it goes is you are in your place. Now, coming to work every day, Fred had a message for me, and you know what? I understood and accepted that message. Today, I feel like Fred would have a different message. If Fred were here, Fred would be messaging me and all the other guys. There's one or two other guys here for, who are here from work. And um, we are, we are all kind of retired now. But um, as it goes, I think Fred's message right now would be about God. You know, Fred had a, had a way of taking control of a conversation and kind of directing it a little bit the way he wanted to to hear it. And I think today, Fred, would, would message would be how great, how good God is. You know, it's, it's amazing how things change your life. Um, I grew up here in this church, for those of you who don't know. I grew up, this is church home for me. And um, as, as I was coming up, later on down the road, Ruth came to the church. And so I got to know Fred in one way and Ruth in another way. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And um, Fred was always my wife. And I'm talking about, like the guy said here earlier, ride or die. Ruth was always my wife. Fred was my wife, my wife. And you didn't have to guess. You didn't have to, hey, Fred was... But something good was going on with Fred, it was through Ruth. And you better believe when they say behind a good man is a better, greater woman. Fred had a wife that kept him in line. Fred had a, Fred had a wife that, that um, when he needed, when Fred wanted, Ruth was there for that. 
So, you know, just to let you guys know, God has a, has a way. God has a method. He has a reason. I was born, I, I'm guessing, right around 12 years or so later behind Fred in the same city, Monroe, Louisiana. And um, we became fast friends when our facilities merged. And I'm trying to tell you, it was Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana. And that was, that was part of our conversation every day. And, uh, you know, California's great. Don't get me wrong. It's all, all you were born here. But most people from California are from someplace else. I'm glad to be from Louisiana. I'm happy to be from Monroe. Because, you know, God brought Fred and I together. And that was, for me, an amazing thing. Fred had a big thing about teasing, too, for you guys. Fred had a serious sense of humor, for you guys who don't know. Sense of humor and anything and everything you can think of. And I'd just like you, for you to know, family, some of you I don't know you by name, don't know you by face. But I know you by Fred's experience. And it's about love. And uh, Ruth, if you ever need, and I'm, Ruth knows I'm close, actually. Um, I'm always here for whatever you need. Um, Fred wouldn't have it any other way. Just to let you guys know, we talked about, I don't know, we were on, sometimes we were on 5'8", sometimes we were on 4'10", depending on the time of the year and what was going on. With, um, with the dairy industry. But um, Fred was, Fred was, was a person. He was a man. And um, advice, he never ran out of it. So I'm gonna leave you guys with this because my, my biggest thing is I could probably go on for forever. Just talk about the experiences and the things and the times that Fred and I have talked about and family, uh, like I said, I know some of you by experience, by Fred's experience. And um, it's a very interesting thing. It's about love, love in God. But I'm going to leave you there. Thank you. Good morning, so good morning. I'm LaFonda Williams. Um, Freddie was my cousin, my friend, and like an uncle. We spent many times talking about law enforcement. And as you said, he had the last say so. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. He always tell me I'm just like my father, which I was just like him. Meaning, I say what I say, and I mean what I mean. There was a time, every time something happened in the media, I would be the first person he called. I'm thanking Ruthie for when you called to me and asked me if I would say a few words. I was so happy to do so. But there's so much to share, as the gentleman said, you don't know which way to go. But with Fred and I, we always talked about law enforcement. I've been retired now after serving almost 38 years into law enforcement. And anytime something happened in the media, I'm the first person he'll call and he'll say, I know you got an answer for me. Cousin, what's the answer? I don't understand, especially with the George Ford, George Floyd situation, when that knee went to his neck. He said, that's not part of practice. I said, I'm going to share something with you. I'm in a great area with that. And he said, what do you mean about that? I said, no, maybe, and yes. He goes, that knee could be on his neck. I go, yes. I said, but hold on. Let's not roll this too fast because 
I retired the training officer. I said, so allow me, I'll give you some training on why I said no, maybe, and yes. Law enforcement is a very, very, very difficult job for somebody how to do it. And I challenge him and those who listen to me. Take a ride alone and please not just do one. When I asked for his question, he yelled out to Ruthie, hey, turn that TV down, I'm on the phone with Fonda. I got here what she's talking about. Because she was waiting on exactly what was my perspective of the George Floyd situation. So I said, okay, cousin, are you ready? I said, I, said, I know you're sitting down. And he go, yeah, I'm sitting down. I happened to be in the mountains, so my phone was not doing too well, but I knew he wanted to hear my remarks. I said, let me go up to the stairs and we'll talk. I'm on the stairs talking to him like this. I said, okay, I'm gonna start off with the word. You want to know if he was right to put his knee on his neck? And the answer was yes. What? Yes. That's part of our training. Unfortunately, in the situation he was in, and he didn't have the manpower to support him. Rule of thumb is that you be in control at all times. So, Freddie, the answer was yes. And I said, maybe. Well, where maybe come in at? I said, maybe if he had the right amount of manpower, the knee wouldn't have been that long on his neck. We take anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds with the knee if you're cooperating. When we ask to put your arms, your hands behind your back, if you don't do so, if you look at the weight of George Floyd versus the officer that was on his back, unfortunately, he was there too long. So that part of the answer would be yes as well, because it took eight minutes. You put your knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes. That's absolutely wrong. But unfortunately, he didn't have the manpower he needed to be in full control that left him with the knee in the back. But that's never an excuse to take somebody's life. I'm here to tell you. But protocol was followed, but unfortunately, Freddie and I, we went to back. We went in and he went out. Every time he see me, he would take my right hand and he'd turn it. And he'd tell me, you bad, get out of it. I said, are you ready? Are you really ready? I said, not just that extensive training I went into law enforcement and we had to be trained every 90 days to make sure we were able to protect and serve. However, Taekwondo is another I took up to make sure I felt enough confidence in somebody George Floyd's size. So, he'll take my hand, and I'm telling you, and within seconds, I'm a release from it. How did you do that? Called training. So I took him one time, and I said, I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing. And I was gradually teaching him how to get out. I said, even if you use your handcuffs, you can do that without a handcuff, believe it or not. This is how we get our extensive training. Because when somebody found a way of doing something, now we have to teach it to the rest of the officers. That's why I would try to tell people when something is going on, you never know why they're doing what they're doing. And Freddie and I will always go to battle the word, why? And I tell everyone, why, that word why is the most important word that you will ever learn. Why are we here? Why are you eating every day? Why do you go to work? So anytime I always talk to someone, I'm very in a gray area. It's hard for me to say yes and hard for me to say no. It's always, it depends. I try to keep my horizon open and like the gentleman said, Freddie gonna be Freddie. Freddie going to challenge you on whatever you said. Because you, he had to see it his way. 
a week before he transitioned, I was at the hospital. And every time I go see Freddie, he was always happy to see me. He kept a smile. He would always reach out his hand to hold my hand. But a week before he transitioned, I went to the hospital to see him. And I had just called Stella until I was going to go see him. And she said, well, he's doing dialysis. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good time to see him. Well, I'm coming here from Orange County. I'm going to see Freddie. I go see Freddie. And as I walk in, he didn't reach out for my hand as he normally do. My antenna went up. Anytime he would respond to me, I'll go tickle his feet. If I tickle him, I know I can make him angry because he's going to yell at me and tell me not to do it. And that was what I wanted him to do. I wanted him to challenge me. He said, cuz, I don't think I'm going back home. I said, I hear you. Let's continue watching TV. But when he told me that, a tear came from his eye. And I said, okay, antenna, calm down. So I went home that night. And I called Ruthie. And she said, he's doing okay. He's in a lot of pain. I was getting ready for go to Vegas, and I knew his birthday was coming. So I had to go see him before I leave to go to Vegas because I was going to miss his birthday party that he had at the hospital. That Thursday, I had a minor procedure myself. Bent over a little bit, but the doctor told me that I can drive myself to see him to have the procedure, and I can leave, riding back home. I'm like, okay. So I call up Stella, and I said, well, my procedure is over. And she said, well, I know you're going to go home and rest. I said, nope, nope, I'm going to go see Freddie. And she gave me a direct order to go home. I said, nope, I'm going to go see Freddie. I got to go get a battle. I slowly walked myself in, and he didn't reach out his right hand to hold my hand. I said, Lord, you give and you take. Knowing I'm going to miss his party because I had to go to the last Raiders game, I was able to call and wish him a happy birthday. But I tossed and turned, and I said, my friend, my buddy, my uncle, I have no one to battle with. He's the only person I can talk to that would give me a run for my money because he had a gab and he loved the challenge. Loved the challenge. If you was intellectually inclined, you had his uninvited attention till the cows come home. But what I want to say, okay, what I'm going to just close by saying this here, Ruthie, baby, you're a soldier. I watch you from day, from the start to the end for everything. And as the gentleman said, you are a ride or die. I'm going to ask what I did because I know 30, 56 years of a marriage, something I know I'm not going to experience. I only got 18 out of it, 15 years out of it. But I'd like to present you to the plat if I may. And it reads as follows. Ruthie Harris, a profound and dedicated wife to Freddie Harris, April the 7th, 1968 to January 7th, 2024, 56 years of holy matrimony. If I have everyone rise to their seat that can stand and give her a round of applause if I would present this to her.
Uh, we have to be in the gate at a certain time. So I'm going to ask uh, Lamont Reed, U.S. Navy, Master Chief, retired, come up. Uh, let's be brief. And also Pastor Timothy Chambers immediately after. And do we have uh, any, uh, do we have the mayor here, Mayor of Carson? Do we have any Sydney uh, dignitaries or representatives here today? Okay, we're going to go with uh, as the uh, program is printed. So let's uh, let's get through it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. All right, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, it should be less than five minutes, I'd say. Uh, just some reading to do here. Um, I would say uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's an honor to be in this building again. I grew up right across the street. This uh, church is a staple in this community. Uh, I was baptized for the second time as a teenager in this church. We used to call the pastor Reverend Bugs. Reverend Bugs and the Bugs family and the sons. And I mean, so anyway, I just wanted to call a, a real close connection uh, to, to being here in, in the church. Uh, I'm cousin Lamont Reed. Uh, just want to say a few words, uh, put some things together. I had a special task from my uh, great aunt Stella, which is my cousin, but I'm going to go through the history. Uh, I call her the Admiral. So I got a special task of our family history from the Admiral. All right. I extend my deepest condolence during this difficult time as we remember and honor the life of our great cousin, Freddie Harris. As we grieve his passing, let us find solace in the rich tapestry of his life, a legacy woven with courage, resilience, and an unyielding spirit. Now, doing my history as, as, as a youngster, I had to start, I'm 55 now, I'm saying youngster because I got to understand our family roots. Uh, our family history is connected through the bond of sisterhood between my great grandmother, Josephine Williams, and Cousin Freddie's mother, Fanny Harris Hendricks. This family ties makes my grandmother, Liz Sanford, and Cousin Freddie first cousins. Okay, so it took me a bit, because I call him Uncle Freddie, Cousin Freddie, I want to call her Chris, hey, hey Uncle Freddie, I mean, just different, because we just, you know, we're, we're, we're family aligned and so close, and we just don't do the time to do the history and the research, so thank you, uh, Auntie Stella, Cousin Stella, but that's my Auntie Stella. Okay, so in 1969, Freddie's journey took a profound turn when he answered the call to serve in the United States Army, okay? Uh, his commitment and valor during this uh, period speak values about the strength of his character. And during 16 weeks of boot camp training in Fort Polk, Louisiana, okay? Cousin Freddie embarked on a path that led him to the challenging landscape of Vietnam for a year, followed by Colorado Springs. Now, I'm going to do something very uh, official and formal here. Uh, no need for anyone else to stand. Uh, but it would only be fitting for Cousin Freddie to read this, the, the Soldier's Creed. Okay, it's going to tie in to my closing. Private First Class, Freddie Harris, United States Army. This is what he would say and he said it many times. I'm an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. He lived by that. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined physically and mentally tough, trained, and proficient in my warrior task and drill. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. Okay, we're gonna pause there with just a little levity. We're gonna have fun really quick. Turn to the front of your program. Look at the picture in arms. Cousin Freddie said, I always maintain my equipment and my arms and myself this just told me you see that time piece on this vietnam warrior 
Do you, I'm saying, do you see the timepiece? That watch on this Vietnam warrior, wedding ring, timepiece, all of his jewelry, but also you see them bullets. Those bullets are not the standard bullets for that gun, I don't think. If anybody know about the Army and know about putting them down range, that looked like an M60. That looked like that big boy that Cousin Freddie had. To, they call it the, the chopper, the jungle chopper. It just start chopping trees in the jungle. Them the bullets that he got around his waist. Okay, so I'll pause there and uh, get back on track here. But I wanted to call that out about always maintaining his arms, his equipment, and himself. I am an expert. I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and, American way, and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. That's Cousin Freddie. Now, as I close here, I'm going to finish up a little bit about his decorated career. Cousin Freddie's military service was marked by distinction and his honorable discharge in August 1971 reflects the commitment to duty that goes beyond words. In Vietnam, Cousin Freddie faced peril of, uh, faced peril of war with bravery, earning several medals that underscore his, his dedication. So Cousin Freddie earned the Army Service Ribbon, he earned the National Defense Service Medal, Cousin Freddie earned the Vietnam Service Medal. He earned the Bronze Service Star. And he also earned the Combat Infantry Badge as well as Expert Rifle. One bit of lesson again from a 30-year military man. That all happened in one year. We may have missed that. That all happened in one year. Cousin Freddie wasn't no joke. He was no joke. Freddie's journey of resilience takes a, heart, takes a heartbreaking twist on a pivotal day in Vietnam when an explosion tragically claimed the lives of two comrades, leaving Freddie as the lone survivor. This distressing experience stands as a testament of his fortitude and the divine intervention that steered him through the most challenging moments of his military service. Amidst the depths of tragedy, Freddie's survival emerges as a beacon of hope, reminding us of the preciousness of life. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath in this house praise the Lord on today. This is a home-going celebration. Amen. Here to celebrate the life of my dear brother, Brother Freddie Lee Harris. Amen. Be Nana's husband. Talking about Stella's brother. Amen. Brother Freddie, I just stopped by to tell you that his assignment was complete. His number was up. He had did all that God wanted him to do because life ain't nothing but a number. You heard him say that he met Ruthie in April, they got married April the 7th in 1968. When he laid eyes on her, he realized he didn't want to go through the world without her, and she realized she didn't want to go through the world without him. So they jumped the broom, amen? Amen, and they were together for 55 years and nine months. They were together for 669 months. They were married for 2,909 weeks. They were married for 20,363 days. They were married for 488,712 hours. They was married for 29,322,720 29, minutes. They were married for 1,759,363,200 seconds. Amen. And your vows were fulfilled. Amen. And Ruthie, you fulfill your vows until death did you part. Amen. Because life ain't nothing but a number, and I'm trying to hurry up because I know the preacher got to come and we got to get somewhere and things like that. There. But my brother, I stopped by to tell you that life really consists of two pieces of paper. It's called the birth certificate and the death certificate. Both of those pieces of paper are full of numbers, and you don't get to put anything on either one of them. 
On your birth certificate, it's got the day you were born. It's got the month you were born. It's got the year you were born. It's got how much you weighed, how tall you was, which ain't nothing but a number. Between the birth certificate and the death certificate, you're given a couple of more numbers that'll follow you till your number is up. It's called your social security number and your driver license number. Brother Freddie was blessed with another number because he went to the United States Army and he got another number. Lord have mercy. Amen. So Brother Freddie's number was January the 6th, 1947. That's when he slid out the canal coming here to see how he was going to make his mark and leave his legacy in life. His number was January the 7th, 2024, that God looked down from heaven and said he had did all that he had assigned for him to do. My brother Freddie got to live 77 years in one day, and his number was up. My brother Freddie got to live 924 months in one day, and his number was up. My brother Freddie got to live 4,017 weeks, six days, and his number was up. My brother Freddie got to live 28,125 days, and his number was up. My brother Freddie got to live 675,000 hours, and his number was up. My brother Freddie got to live 40,500,000 minutes, and his number was up. He got to live 2,430,000,000 seconds, and his number was up. And the other day, he had his ticket in his hand. My daddy said, you have to be careful because life is like an airport. You got flights coming in and taking off every hour, every minute, every second of the day, and you got to make sure you got your ticket in your hand. One thing about my brother Freddie, he had his ticket in his hand because when he was a young boy, he what? Gave his heart and his life to God. He got baptized. Not only did he get baptized, but he sung in the junior choir. Not only did he sing in the junior choir, but he was a junior usher. That's how he could cut them corners in the masonry. Lord have mercy. Uh, my daddy say that ticket can be confusing because on one of them you got an H and the other one it's got an H. One stands for heaven bound, the other one stands for hell bound. He say when you look at that ticket it can be confusing because one has got an S and the other one has got an F. One S stands for saints and the other one stands for sinners. He say but the way you know you got the right ticket is on one it's got E-L and the other one it's got E-D. E-D stands for eternal damnation. E-L stands for everlasting life. Take your rest my brother, I love you. All right, all right. We're going to move on with the service. We do have to be in the gate in 45, 47 minutes. So we're going to have uh, the Lord's Prayer brought to us by uh, the song Arlene Bland, Obituary, First Lady Connie Chambers. We have a selection praise team, and I'll come back with, uh, well, the eulogy has been preached. Uh, we'll have the final remarks, the recessional. And then we'll have the final viewing. One thing my pastor always said, two times when a preacher wants to preach is when one did and one didn't. Let's move on. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My cousin Freddie. He can dance. He can cut them corners.
celebrating a life well lived. Freddie Lee Harris was born on January 6, 1947 in Monroe, Louisiana. He was the fourth of seven children born to the late Ben Harris and Fanny Harris Hendricks. Freddie accepted Christ at an early age and was baptized by Reverend L. W. Watson of Mount Olive Baptist Church. I'm going to mess up this word in that name, River in Rayville, Louisiana. He was active in the church as a junior usher and sang in the youth choir. Freddie began his childhood education at Purdue Elementary School in Louisiana, attended Alto Junior High, and later graduated from Alto High School in May 1965. He had such a passion and love for taking care of people that after graduating, he worked at Colonial Manor Guest House, a nursing home in Rayville, Louisiana. Freddie met the love of his life, Ruthie May Witherspoon of Rayville, Louisiana, and they married April 7, 1968. Freddie was drafted in the United States Army in 1969. After completing his basic training in Fort Polk, Louisiana, he went to Vietnam for one year where he was loved by many adults and children. While serving in Vietnam, he earned several medals. Freddie finished his service in Colorado Springs, Colorado until he was honorably discharged in August 1971. After his discharge from the United States Army, Freddie and Ruthie decided to make California their home. Freddie went to work for Earl Wood Nursing Home in Torrance, California for one year. He was then offered a better job with Vons Dairy, where he worked for over 30 years and ret retired in 2005. After retiring, he spent many hours fishing, watching sports, playing dominoes, hanging out with the guys at Denny's, and going to Vegas. Freddie was preceded in death by his father, Ben Harris, his mother, Fanny Harris Hendricks, and three brothers, Reverend Jimmy Ray Harris, Leonard Harris, and Leon Harris, and one sister, Helen Faye Harris. He leaves to cherish his loving memory, wife, Ruthie Harris of Carson, California, sisters, Estella Leonard of Gardena, California, and Anne McLean of Rayville, Louisiana, six nieces, Yvonne Leonard of Gardena, California, Kimberly Leonard Hill, David of Paris, California, Pamela Harris of Houston, Texas, Jennifer McLean of Rayville, Louisiana, Keisha Harris of Monroe, Louisiana, and Sabrina, Mc Sabrina McLean of Rayville, Louisiana. Five nephews, Christopher Leonard, Leslie of Carson, California, Joseph Harris of Parson, Kansas, Tony Harris of Monroe, Louisiana, Terry ha Harris of Monroe, Louisiana, and Clifton McLean Sr. Tawana of Heaton, Louisiana. Five grandchildren, Shara Mullane Peoples Carrolls of Las Vegas, Nevada, Sharonda Lynn Bakersfield, I'm sorry, Barksdale of Los Angeles, California, Juan Ardia Indo, Jennifer Ora Perez, Carol of Las Vegas, Nevada, Sharonda Lynn Barksdale of Los Angeles, California, June Arkin Indo, Jennifer Operitz, I read that already, of Marino Valley, California, Mills Jeffrey Indo, Diana Borquez of Mon Marino Valley, California, and Imani Irie Solocum, of Los Angeles, California, God-given sisters Gracie Johnson of Inglewood, California, Carol Rubick of Las Vegas, Nevada, Helen Thomas of Wilmington, California, 
Audrey K. Ellis of Los Angeles, California, Joanne Howard of Rayville, Louisiana, and Cherie Marlowe of Longview, Texas. God-given daughters, Catherine Gross of Carson, California, Renee Carter of Compton, California, and Tina Ely of Jonesboro, Georgia, God-given grandchildren, Edward Olivian Shelley Parks of Riverside, California, Maya Harvey of Jonesboro, and TJ Harvey of Jonesboro, and a host of great nieces, great nephews, cousins, and friends. God bless and keep you all.
Lord a hand of praise. Yes, 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 yes. I just need a couple of minutes. We got to be at the grave site. We've got to be in the gate. I want to respect our directors and our family and everyone. So we've heard two, maybe two or three eulogies today. So I'm not going to bring you one more. I'm just going to just touch, just take a couple of minutes and just say this. Uh, Brother Harris is in a better place. We say that all the time. We know that because he accepted Christ and it's a one-time thing. So uh, I just want to just quote a verse of scripture to you. And Jesus said this. Jesus said to, to her in verses, I'm sorry, chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. This is Jesus' words. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that's from the New King James Version. So we know Brother Harris gave his life to Christ. So he didn't die, he transitioned. He's in glory. And we've been talking about it all along. Brother Harris was a man that, uh, he was a man's man. And I just want to say what was said today, which was 55 years. He stuck to his vow, Sister Harris. He stuck to his vow. And I was looking at the pictures on here and I saw some dancing going on. So I, I, I guess Brother Harris, could, uh, he was smooth with some moves too, huh? And I saw some smiling and hugging and embracing and everything, so he was loving. I, I, I just admired him. The day I, I, I spoke to him in the hospital, I walked in the room and he started talking about, how you doing? I'm like, hey, how you doing? And he, he started going on, encouraging me, and I'm, I couldn't get a word in. But I admired this man because he was a warrior he was a strong man, and he served this country, and not only served this country, he served the Lord. He loved the Lord, and that's the most important thing that we can do. And if we don't make our reservation today to meet our maker, then we're going to miss out. And it's easy as a, a, a confessing and believing in him. So I, I just want to just say that right there. And I want to say to the family, we're praying for you. I'm here for you. Anything you need. I, I, let me tell you something. I'm adopted into this family, right? Ain't that right, Mother Lenny? Uh, I'm your son here. And, and these are my siblings right here. For you, those who don't know, I'm just going to show up and uh, get me some food when I want to. Can I do that? So, uh, uh, Mother Harris, if I show up, I know you're going to say, let him in. Because <laughs> Mother Harris, you, you, you can just truly rejoice now. I know there's going to be times of grieving, but just know that God is with you and know that you stuck to your vows, your husband. And again, I look at them pictures and all I've seen is love. I'm going to show them to my wife. <laughs> look at this. Look at this page right here. Because y'all did it 55 years. And I've said it many times. Some folks can't stay married 55 days. 55 days they want out, but 55 years of true love. And I know he had a gem in you because, Mother Harris, I don't even think you ever said a cuss word. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Let's keep moving now. But anyway, that's all I have to say. We're going to wrap this up. Let's give the Lord a hand praise today. And I just want to say, I just want to say this. Uh, thank you, Pastor Chambers. You, you, you brought a good eulogy today. Beautiful job. Beautiful, beautiful. I learned something from my pastor. My pastor pastored 45 years total. And one thing he told me, he says, don't try to get up there. If something has already been done, don't do it again. So I, I want to learn from that. So I've learned something from that. So we're going to move on. Uh, Brother Plummer, come on down. We're going to bring the directors. We're going to get moving. We got to be in the gate and do the whole thing. But listen, family, I'm here for you. Central Baptist family is here for you, Sister uh, Harris. Anything you need, you know you can reach out to me. You know I love you. Uh, I'm like a nephew now. Ain't that right, Mother Leonard? 
But anyway, it's so good to be here. I just want to say, uh, let us remember that Jesus is the reason for every season. If you don't know Jesus, get to know him. He's the only way, the only way. There's no other way except for through Christ. Amen? Amen. So before we uh, uh, proceed on, I want to just say to you, if you're going to the grave site, please uh, 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 proceed to your vehicles. Turn on your headlights and your hazards so that the, the directors, the motor directors, will know you're with the motorcade and uh, you're with the family. Amen? Amen. So, uh, B, please, if you want to spend time with the family, we are having a repass here at the church. So if you want to come back, please come on back and join the family. Encourage them. Don't let's, let this be the last time you reach out to uh, Mother Harris. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. I had a good old 30-minute uh, eulogy ready for you, and I was going to take it on in, but oh, man, we heard all those today. So I want to respect the family. How many of you want to hear me preach? I'm just kidding. I'm, kidding. So I'm just playing. Rejoicing, it will be right when we all get to heaven. Thank you. 
see the king. See the king. 